So I'm going to approach these just like we did it yesterday, okay? So I'm going to kind of combine the two things that we did yesterday. Yesterday we did like f of g of 1, where we plugged in a number. Remember, we plugged the number into g first and then plug that result into f. Similar thing is going to happen here. We're just not plugging in a number, we're plugging in an expression. So if we are doing f of g of x plus 1, I'm going to start by plugging x plus 1 into my g of x function. So I'm going to kind of go over here to the side, and I'm going to do that g of x plus 1 first. Okay, so that means I've got 2 times x plus 1 minus 3. I'm replacing the x in my g of x function with x plus 1. I need to simplify that. That's 2x plus 2 with a minus 3 on the end, so that gives me 2x minus 1. So that is equal to g of x plus 1. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to replace g of x plus 1 with 2x minus 1 because that's what it was equal to. And then I need to plug 2x minus 1 into my f of x function. So I may not, I need to kind of go down to the next slide because I'm not going to have room. Alright, so I think it's helpful to be in this habit of kind of putting your skeleton, okay? So leave out the x's, write everything else down, just don't write down the x's, put you some parentheses there where the x's are, and then go in and fill in the expression that you're plugging in. So the blue is my f of x function. The green is where I'm plugging in g of x plus 1. And then we've got to simplify that, okay? So keep that 2 in front, foil 2x minus 1, that's 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. Distribute the 5, 10x minus 5, and then we've got the minus 12 there on the end. Distribute the 2, 8x squared minus 8x plus 2 plus 10x, go ahead and put the minus 5 and the minus 12 together, minus 17. Final step, combine any other like terms that we have. We have 8x squared, we've got a minus 8x plus 10x, that's plus 2x, and we've got a plus 2 minus 17, that's minus 15. So here is f of g of x plus 1. So, how could we check this? Well, kind of like yesterday, you know, I showed you the y1 of y2 of whatever number. You could pick a number for x, okay? Avoid stuff like 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2. 5 is usually a safe bet. Okay, so here, that would be 5 plus 1 is 6. So you could do y1 of y2 of 6. And then you can plug in 5 for x here, and those numbers should agree if you did it correct. Does that make sense? Okay, say that, <clears throat> let me write that down. Okay, to check, let x equal 5. So you would do f of g of 5 plus 1, which is f of g of 6. Do that in your calculator. Okay, the way that we did it yesterday. Um, let me remind you how we did that yesterday. We put f in y1. Two x squared plus five x minus twelve. We put g in y2. We went back to our regular screen, bars over the y bars, y1, parentheses, bars over the y bars, y2, parentheses, the number we're plugging in, in this case 6, close parentheses, okay, that gives us 195, now 195 is not really the answer to this problem, it's just one instance, okay, um, so that gave us 195 in the calculator, so then we also plug in 
x is 5, so we plug in 5 here, we plug in 6 because we are plugging in x plus 1. Okay, type that into your calculator and it should give you 195 if you did it correctly. 8 times 5 squared plus 2 times 5 is 10 minus 18. Okay, if those numbers don't agree, then something's wrong with your expression. It doesn't tell you what's wrong with it, it just tells you that it's wrong. Alright? <clears throat> so if those agree, we're good. Okay, I just said, I just picked 5 for x. Okay, I just picked 5 for x. It's a good number. You don't want to pick things like 1 and negative 1 and 2, sometimes there's going to be exceptions. So 5 is usually a safe choice. I just picked it. I could have picked 11, okay? I just randomly picked that number. Okay, the 6 came from x plus 1. Okay, uh, let's do, let's reverse it. Let's do g of f of negative a over 2. g of f of negative a over 2. G of f of negative a over 2. Okay, so again, we start with plugging negative a over 2 into our f function this time. So f of negative a over 2 is equal to f is uh, 2x squared plus 5x minus 2. 2x squared plus 5x minus Okay, now, when you square a fraction, you've got to square the top and square the bottom. When you square negative a squared, you get positive a squared. When you square 2, you get 4. I know, I didn't do a very good job. My a's got sloppy. It's supposed to be an a, I'm sorry. That is an a. Okay, uh, negative 5. Excuse me, 5 times negative a over 2, we'll write that as negative 5a over 2. Two. 2 over 4 leaves us with a 2 in the bottom. So we get a squared over 2 minus 5a over 2. Well, since they're over 2, I want my 12 to be over 2 as well. So that would be... 24 over 2. Okay, so final answer here that I would write is a squared minus 5a minus 24 all over 2. Okay, so I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to replace my f of a negative a over 2 with a squared minus 5a minus 24 all over 2. So that means I'm plugging that expression into my g of x function, which was 2x minus 3. So 2 parentheses minus 3. And in the parentheses, I put my expression there, a squared minus 5a minus 24 over 2. This was my whole purpose in keeping it as um, an expression over 2, because I can now cancel those 2s. And so that's a squared minus 5a minus 24 minus 3. So final answer, a squared minus 5a minus 27. Okay, bless you. <clears throat> and you can do a similar thing here. Okay, you can pick A to be 5, plug it in, plug it in, uh, confirm it, and, and make sure that, that it works out.